Hello friends, my name is Baji. Welcome to our channel. This is episode number 9 in our performance testing must-have skills series. In this video, we will continue to discuss some of the performance testing core concepts. If you are watching this series for the first time, please watch previous episodes of the series and continue these concepts. You can find the link to this playlist series in the description. We will begin by discussing the topics covered in this video. First, we will discuss the concept of entry and exit criteria and then we will understand what a deliverable is. Finally, we will discuss the most important concept in performance testing that is performance testing life cycle every performance tester should understand the performance testing life cycle so without wasting any time let's dive into it before we explore the performance testing life cycle concept we need to understand a few terms that were used in that process like entry criteria exit criteria and deliverables so let's look at entry and exit criteria now so what is an entry criteria it is a condition or conditions that must be met before we can start something that means before we start anything these conditions must be met we can also say that these are prerequisites for example if you want to do testing then you should have some environment isn't it for starting a test a test environment readiness can be an entry criteria similarly exit criteria is a condition or conditions that must be met before you can complete something for example let's say you have five planned test runs in order to say that execution is completed you must execute all five planned test runs now let's discuss the concept of deliverables so what is a deliverable in general terms it is the output you expect to have at the end of the phase or activity that means you must be expecting to deliver something at the end of the phase for instance after completing the test you will deliver the test report which consists of results your observations recommendations etc now let's discuss the concept of performance testing life cycle it is also called ptlc similar to sdlc software development life cycle which we discussed in module number two it is also a systematic process to carry out the performance testing of software system or application in this life cycle we will have different phases all these phases need to be completed in order to say that performance testing for that project or application is completed let's quickly explore those phases now study and gathering this is our first phase in the performance testing life cycle in this phase we generally study and understand the application its architecture and gather all necessary performance related non-functional requirements in the upcoming slides, we will discuss more about each phase and the activities that will be carried out in the respective phase. Our next phase is planning. In this phase, we will prepare a test plan or strategy with the gathered performance related non-functional requirements. Once the document is ready, we will review it with the project team and obtain their sign off. This is to make sure that everyone in the project team agrees with the defined performance testing scope for the project. Once the test plan or strategy has been signed off, we will move on to the next phase. Our next phase is preparation. In this phase, we will start all the preparation activities for the performance testing test executions. Here preparation activities are like creating performance test scripts for the in-scope scenarios, ensuring the necessary test data is available and creating the test scenarios etc. Our next phase is execution. In this phase we will execute all the planned load tests. There are different types of performance tests available. Based on the requirements or objectives we will choose the right type of test execution and execute them accordingly. In the upcoming videos we will discuss the different types of performance tests. Our next phase is analysis. In this phase we will analyze the test execution results to understand if the there are any deviations from the requirements. With the help of support teams, we will also carry out the root cause analysis. Once the issues have been fixed, we will retest and validate the test results. We will end this phase after completion of all the planned test execution and the results are acceptable. Our final phase is reporting. In this phase, we will prepare the performance test final report which includes all our findings in the test executions and recommendations. If there are any outstanding issues or deviations, then we will create a defect and assign it to the respective team for future tracking purposes. Similar to the test plan, the final report will also be reviewed with the project team and obtain their sign off. After that, we will upload all the performance testing related documents to the shared repository like SharePoint, Confluence, etc. for future references. With that, the performance testing activities for the project will be completed. I hope you got a high level understanding of the different phases in PTLC. Please feel free to mention it in the comment section if anything is not clear. Now let's discuss the different activities of each phase in detail. During the interviews, if they ask you about the roles and responsibilities, you can explain the activities of different phases. It's become the responsibility of the resource who is conducting them in that phase. First, let's start with the study and gathering phase. This is the first phase in our performance testing life cycle. Typically, the performance test manager or a designated performance test lead will conduct this phase. If the project and team size is big, 
then the different resources may be assigned to manage various phases. However, in certain situations, the same resource may oversee all the phases. Each phase must have its own set of entry and exit criteria. Consequently, it is important to satisfy these criteria both before entering and upon exiting any given phase. That's why I have quickly explained them at the beginning of this video. For the study and gathering phase, we need project intake approval as an entry criteria. Every company has a different process to engage the performance assessing team in the project. In general, the project or application team will submit a request or intake to the performance testing team that they need support from the team to assess the requirements and carry out the performance testing activities. Afterwards, the performance testing manager will review the request and engage the necessary resource for the project. So project intake approval has to be done before the performance testing team engages in the project. After the resources have been engaged, they will carry out various activities within the phase. It's not necessary that all the activities should be done in the listed manner. However, it is essential to ensure the completion of all the activities before starting the subsequent phase. Initially, we should collect the information regarding the project's key stakeholders. Before starting any further in the project, we should have points of contacts from different teams like development teams, testing teams, business teams and infrastructure support teams. This approach ensures that when specific queries or clarifications arise, we have designated contacts for each team. For instance, if we require clarification on a particular business scenario, having a designated point of contact within the business team allows us to promptly schedule a meeting and address the details. It is equally important to gain a comprehensive understanding of the application architecture, its components and the involved technology stack. This is very important for any performance tester before starting their performance testing activities. I have covered these concepts extensively in module number 3 of the series. If you are not already familiar with these concepts or need further clarification, I recommend reviewing module number 3 before proceeding any further here. In the case of performance testing for an existing application, it's crucial to understand the type of changes the team intends to implement and the specific business scenarios that will be affected. However, when dealing with a new application, you may need to gain a complete understanding of the application. During this phase, it is essential to collect all the non-functional requirements related to the performance such as the total number of peak users, peak transactions per second, also called as TPS, response time service level agreements and more. We will have a separate video to dive into various types of performance testing requirements that need to be gathered. However, for the time being, just try to understand that we should gather all the non-functional requirements. When conducting performance testing for the first time, it is essential to conduct a tool feasibility analysis, often referred to as proof of concept, nothing but POC. This process allows us to determine the suitability of the chosen tool for the testing of this application. If performance testing have previously been conducted for this application, then there may be no need to re-evaluate tool feasibility and this step can be skipped. It's also crucial to collect comprehensive details about both production and performance test environments, including information on hardware, software and network configurations. Upon the successful completion of all activities, it is essential to deliver a tool feasibility report and an NFR document. In order to exit this phase, it is important to ensure that the client has reviewed the NFR document and has given their formal approval by signing off on it. This implies their agreement with the non-functional requirements collected during the phase. Upon meeting the exit criteria for this phase, we will start the subsequent phase which is the planning phase. So this is the second phase in our performance testing life cycle. Typically either performance test manager or the performance test lead will be in charge of this phase. The initiation of all planning activities will be driven by the inputs derived from the previous phase. A signed off NFR document serves as the entry criteria for this phase. Therefore, before starting this phase, we need to ensure that the NFR document has been signed off by the client. Now let's dive into various planning activities that will be undertaken during this phase. At the beginning of the project, the project team looks for a detailed breakdown of the performance related tasks, outlining the expected duration for each specific activity. This is nothing but effort estimation. This comprehensive breakdown not only provides transparency regarding our activities, but also facilitates progress tracking for the project team. Furthermore, within the effort estimation, we will also include the details about the performance testing resources. Using the gathered non-functional requirements, we will identify and define the performance test objective. At the end of the project, we will then verify whether these objectives have been successfully achieved. During the requirements gathering, we should gather the critical business process names. In the planning phase, we should work with business analysts or the functional testing team to understand the detailed navigational step, dependencies, test data requirements, etc. We should document all the provided steps and review them with the team to ensure the accuracy of our understanding. This thorough understanding of the business flow is crucial as it forms the foundation for the development of our test scripts. Any mistake at this stage could lead to inaccurate test scripts and consequently inaccurate test results during the executions. I hope you understand the importance. A workload is defined as a collection of user inputs directed at the application or system. Performance testing is typically carried out for both newly developed applications and applications that are already in production. For brand new applications, the process involves constructing a workload model through various meetings with the business analysts or clients. In certain instances,
instances, they may lack familiarity with performance testing concepts. So we need to explain the need and then gather the required data to develop a workload model. When dealing with the applications already in production, the workload model is developed by analyzing the end user behaviors and their patterns of usage within the production environment. It is equally important for us to gain familiarity with various monitoring tools at our disposal for monitoring application performance. Effective monitoring tools are essential for troubleshooting and resolving any performance issues within the environment. Many load testing tools primarily provide application health metrics such as transaction response time and throughput etc. In the event that the response time deviates from the acceptable range, having a robust monitoring in place becomes critical for pinpointing the root causes of the issues. Therefore, during planning phase, it is important that we thoroughly understand and finalize our application performance monitoring strategy. In certain situations, it becomes necessary to identify and define various risks while also formulating a corresponding mitigation plan. These are the performance related risks specific to this project or application. For instance, if the testing environment differs significantly from the production environment, it poses a risk. This discrepancy may prevent us from ensuring that the application's performance attributes such as speed, scalability and stability closely mirrors those of the actual production settings. To mitigate this risk, the plan could involve scaling down the volumes to align with the testing environment's capabilities. During this phase, it is essential to identify and define such risks and the project team should subsequently acknowledge and accept them. Ultimately, based on the information gathered, we should develop a detailed performance test plan or strategy document. This document must undergo a thorough review process involving all application and project stakeholders. Typically, a test plan review meeting will be scheduled for this purpose, during which the team lead will present the document to the stakeholders. Following their agreement with the plan, they will proceed to provide their formal sign-up for the document. During this phase, our standard deliverables include an effort estimation document outlining the required effort for completion of the performance testing project. Additionally, we will provide a detailed workload model and the performance test strategy or plan document. To conclude this phase, we need to ensure that the performance test plan or strategy document has been signed off by the project stakeholders. Upon the successful completion of all planned activities within the planning phase, we will proceed to the next phase known as the preparation phase. Within this phase, all the preparation activities will be undertaken. A test analyst will be responsible for conducting this phase. To initiate this phase, it is crucial to confirm that the performance test plan or strategy document has received formal sign-off. However, in specific scenarios where delays may arise in obtaining sign-off for the test plan document. In such scenarios, we should promptly notify the project manager and start the preparation activities. Simultaneously, we should also follow up with the relevant teams to obtain their sign-offs as needed. Now let's look at some of the activities that the test analyst will undertake in the preparation phase. If you are newly joining the team or starting on your first performance testing project within the company, it is important to install the necessary performance testing tools such as Loadrunner, JMeter and so on. In the case of Loadrunner, you may also require access to the Performance Center or LRE to facilitate the actual test executions. We should create test scripts utilizing the install tool to cover all the designated business flows. To navigate the functional steps, we can rely on our business flow document. In instance where we are testing REST APIs, it is important to collect essential details such as API endpoints, request headers, request body and so forth. In certain cases, the development team may provide Postman requests for the APIs. In such situations, we can also utilize these requests to extract the necessary information for the script development. We should collaborate with the test data management teams to gather the required test data. In certain scenarios, it may be necessary to generate our own test data using scripts. For instance, if we are testing a login scenario, we will need valid usernames and password to access the application. In the case of testing with 100 users, then this would necessitate the creation of 100 unique user IDs and corresponding passwords. During the preparation phase, it may be necessary to conduct a sanity test to verify the scripts, data and environment are functioning as expected. If we see any issues in the environment, then we can seek assistance from the support team to address and resolve them. We must also gather data on application or resource utilization using available monitoring tools. This serves the purpose of verifying the monitoring tools are operating correctly and providing the necessary reports. While some test analysts may verify this during the execution phase, it is important to note that if the tools are not functioning as expected, there might be a need to rerun the test to obtain accurate resource usage reports. By addressing this in the preparation phase, we can avoid potential potential duplication of effort. Once we are done with the script developments, then we should create load test scenarios. Within these scenarios, we will define the user load parameters for each specific test case. The test scripts and scenarios will be delivered at the end of this phase. The exit criteria for this preparation phase is to ensure that all the scripts are working as expected. All the required test data are available for the test execution. Assurance that the test environment is fully configured with all the required settings. The latest code has been successfully deployed and it's operating as anticipated. Upon the completion of the preparation phase, we will start the next phase of the performance testing life cycle. Our next phase in PTLC is execution. A test analyst will also conduct this phase. To commence this phase, it is important 
important to verify the readiness of all test scripts, data, and the testing environment. Essentially, the exit criteria from the previous phase serves as the entry criteria for this phase. Hope you understand that. Now, let's dive into the various execution activities. We need to execute all the scheduled load tests, including various types such as peak load tests, so called endurance tests, and more. Detailed discussion on these tests will be provided in the future videos. Throughout the test executions, it is crucial to maintain ongoing monitoring. In case of any issues, it is essential to strategize the subsequent steps accordingly. For instance, typically peak load test execution is scheduled for duration of 2 hours. However, if for any reason all the transactions fail after just 15 minutes, it becomes impractical to continue for the full 2 hour test duration. In such cases, it is recommended to stop the test, investigate the cause of failures, implement necessary fixes and then restart the test. Following each test execution, it is important to collect and compile all the necessary performance test metrics including application health metrics. Additionally, we must collect infrastructure resource consumption metrics from monitoring tools such as server, CPU utilization and memory usage. In the case of Java application, it becomes imperative to monitor aspects like heap memory usage, garbage collection time, etc. Furthermore, it is highly advisable to collect logs not only from the testing tools but also from the servers. These logs will help us in uncovering the root cause in case of any performance deviations. Upon the completion of this phase, we will deliver the test results and infrastructure resource reports. To conclude this phase, it is essential to verify the availability of all the test results, resource metrics and logs for the subsequent analysis. After successfully executing all the planned activities in the execution phase, we will proceed to the next phase. Our next phase in PTLC is analysis. Typically, this phase will be overseen by either a test analyst or a test engineer. To initiate this phase, we need to have the test results, resource metrics and logs from the previous phase. Now let's explore various analysis activities. It is essential to thoroughly analyze all the test results generated by the testing tool from our test executions. Furthermore, we must conduct an analysis of the infrastructure mountain data including server usage metrics. We must verify if there are any deviations in the performance test results. In the event of deviations, a root cause analysis may be required. For instance, if the client anticipates a 2 second response time for a transaction but the test reveals a 10 second response time. In such an event, we should identify the root cause for the deviation. This investigation typically involves the use of logs and application monitoring tools. In the event that we identify any issues, these problems will be reported to the development team for resolutions. Once the issues have been addressed, there might be a need to rerun the same test to validate whether the deployed fix working as expected. In the case of Java applications, adjustment related to the heap memory and garbage collection tuning will take place. Consequently, it is crucial to plan tuning tests to evaluate the impact of these changes. After the comprehensive analysis, it is essential to compile interim test results with our findings. Upon conclusion of this phase, it is necessary to deliver the interim test results report to the project team. In order to conclude this phase, we need to ensure that all the planned tests are completed and the interim test results reports are ready. Although execution and analysis are different phases, in practice, these two phases are often executed concurrently. Following each test, we conduct an analysis and prepare the interim test results report. If any issue arises due to scripts, data or the environment, we may need to re-execute the test and repeat the analysis as necessary. Now let's discuss the final phase in the PTLC that is reporting. This phase will be jointly conducted by the test analyst and the test lead. However, if the test analyst is responsible for overseeing the entire project, then they will lead this phase. The entry criteria for the reporting phase stipulate that all planned test execution must be completed and the interim analysis report should have been prepared. We must gather all the observations and recommendations derived from the test executions. When conducting testing for an existing application, it may be necessary to compare the test results with the previous test executions to validate any impact. On certain occasions, multiple test runs might be required due to issues and subsequent fixes. In such instances, it is advisable to compare the current test results with the results of previous test runs to validate any improvements. After a thorough analysis, it is essential to establish a baseline and benchmark from these results for use in future projects or releases. With all the results, observations and recommendations, we should compile a conclusive test report for the project. If there are any unresolved issues, they should be assigned to the relevant development team and logged into defect management tool for tracking and resolutions. Upon this phase completion, it is important to conduct a performance test report review with the client stakeholders. Once the report receives its sign off, it should be uploaded to share repository alongside other performance test artifacts for future references. The performance test final report should be delivered after completion of all the activities. In order to conclude this phase, we should ensure that the performance 
comes as final report receives formal sign off from the client stakeholders upon conclusion of this phase the performance testing activity for this project will be finished so that's it for this video thank you so much staying till the end and supporting me i hope you understood all the concepts in this video in case any specific concept is not clear or requires more detailed information please feel free to mention it in the comment section all the video notes have been uploaded in github and you can find the link in the description if you are new to our channel please consider subscribing and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited i'll see you with the next video in module number four until then take care stay safe and keep learning